This episode was brought to you by Slate Black Industries. For M-Lock grips and accessories, visit slateblackindustries.com. Impact. Miss left. Impact. 200. Impact. Impact. All right, I'm on a 250. Impact. Impact. It's uh, particularly Crimean weather this morning. Very much so. Not normal. And this is probably like the coldest it ever gets here. At this time of the year, right? Oh, I'd say like shit most of the year, right? And it's rainy. <laughs> so it's exactly the type of weather you're supposed to deploy this weapon system. 300. Impact. Impact. It's windy as well. Yeah, what? We were getting 20 mile per hour gusts reported? <laughs> yeah. This is the worst so far. Rain? Wind? Wind chill? <laughs> 350. Impact. Off the right edge. Impact. All right, I'm on a 400. Low? Yeah, short, about maybe, I don't know, quarter of a target on the left edge. Impact. Just off the left edge. Impact. Okay. All right, so, sounds crazy to Western shooters, but this particular scope is cammed for 400 meters. 400 meters is roughly at 450. Yep. Uh, it was coming in on par at 400, so maybe I'll aim a little high. Yeah. I think we when we zeroed it, it was just a little low. Yep. Sounds good. We got the, the gusts picking up here as well. And we have a headwind. Yep. Ready? Impact. I think that was... I don't believe that that was a hit. I think you're coming in over the top. Okay. Just shy. Top or bottom? Just shy on the bottom edge. Okay. Left okay. side? Yeah, left side, uh, quarter high. Ah, this is the gust that... Jesus, today. Yeah, just reached us. <laughs> oh, that, okay, I slipped on that one. There it is. Okay, so that last shot, I actually slipped it. I'm, I'm shooting as much simulating like as a, from a combat position as I can. Yeah. So no rear bags, yep. no, just a front rest. Yeah. Basically trying to simulate if you were to grab this, Find some rest and then just plug away. All right, so that one I was aiming at the upper thorax So this section. is your headshot, basically, right? Yeah. So now, now I'm gonna aim a little bit farther towards the headshot, and we have more Crimean weather. Great. 
It's getting, uh, this is a little hard to see out, out to 500. Do you need to uh, wipe the lens a little? Do we have it. Glove. Okay, you set? 500. <laughs> Just underneath. Quarter target low. <laughs> Impact. Uh, low off the left side. Uh, low again. Impact. All right. So, now this is the first clash that we shot with an actual magnified optic. That's so. true. But the intent for this optic is to do exactly that. Yep. It's to take it, slap it on a bone stock issued clash 545, and be able to run it like a DM system, a DMR. Yeah. And it did exactly that. Yeah. In pretty adverse weather conditions too. This is pretty nasty. Yeah, one here. of the worst, one of the worst days we've had so far, which I'm sure the viewers would enjoy seeing yeah. this type of condition that we're in. Yeah. Now, the weather condition I could say is not as cold as actual Ukrainian winter <laughs> weather. I mean, this is probably kind of like April, like a, a rainy April day in in um, in uh, Sevastopol, yeah. I would say. And back when I was still in Europe, we would get intel reports. You'd see guys walking around with clashes like this with the IP29 system. Um, now, it's interesting to say though, most scope systems, especially say with the German T-posts, it's easier to to use a six o'clock hold. But because this one has a top pointer, it's actually easier to hold over. Other way. Yes. So the close range targets are actually harder because that really thick post obscures parts of your target. Right, because you're having to hold low because you're zeroed for about 450 meters. Yep. So that first target, I actually couldn't, I, you can't see the target when you're firing. So a lot of times when I'm trying to shoot a DM system, I try to showcase how fast it could do. That's actually a, a disadvantage for this one, um, shooting this size of a target, right. because it, it, when you're doing a quick follow-up shot, it comes up and then you have to go back down to the, uh, the waistline yeah. section yeah, the and then fire another shot. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that second shot, that was a clear miss. It was also, it was because I was trying to squeeze too fast and I couldn't actually see the target and it went off, off target. Another thing that Western shooters are not used to is the offset target, although it's The offset really, optic? Yeah, offset optic. Um, really, it's less, not as much of a concern. When you're talking about the grand scheme of things, stepping out the 500, I didn't have to really hold off left and, or right. Um, but it's designed to have zero adjustment to go out to, you know, 400 meters and then after that you, you actually have a dial that goes out to a kilometer uh, a very rugged scope that's a cop a direct copy of the british trilux yeah now we learned about a weakness of this scope from earlier though yeah so this wasn't the first run that we tried this morning out yeah. on the course and it's that it actually kind of got us frustrated yeah, because we were having misses on targets at 150 and mm -hmm. 200. That we right were... after we cleared the 400 right. and 500. So, so we'd take a shot, hit out at the distance, come in to start the run. After, you know, we've confirmed zero, come in to start the run and have two misses at 150 yards. Way off, too. Yeah, like over here on the right and then over here yeah. on the left. So one of the issues with, with the, so the, the, the system is interesting. You use a dial to use a dial and then the scope rests with spring pressure on the dial to gauge that elevation change. Now, one of the issues that we saw was also that it has a really, a very short uh, eye relief. Right. Which for us, we try to get a full picture. And when you get a full picture, you're actually pressed upon the scope. And I was actually pressing hard enough to where I was actually affecting yeah, the actually elevation. See it. Do it. Do it again. Yeah. You actually see it, where you're actually moving mm -hmm. the scope. So w when I was when I was really perched on it, I was trying to get that full eye picture. I didn't realize I was pressing so hard. I was moving the scope. Right. And so I was busting the elevation way off. Yep. And so that I would say, it's a very rugged design, and for close range engagements, 
just be cognizant of its its downfalls. I mean, the the really the thick post is really easy to pick up on targets, to lay lay fire on on targets. But you just understand at close range that that may be a con- that may be something you need to slow down mm. and watch that reticle jump. Unlike the crosshairs or T post reticles, yeah, that, that you can track a little bit easier. Yeah. Uh, this coupled with the five four five, I would say, is a pretty lethal DM. Yeah, that system. was that was pretty sweet to run that out there yeah. and just kind of clear it without you know without a heck of a lot of issue. Yeah, I mean, so far at, outside of the World War Two rifles, the rifles that have been able to do that are modified ARs or high dollar ARs, right? Not a bone stock 545 Kalash. Right. Yeah. Now, to be fair, this one's got uh, the ALG trigger in it. It does have an ALG trigger, but for my personal use, I've never been affected by the AK triggers. Yeah. To be so, honest. Yeah, you don't think that that's a material difference? No. To me, it, it wasn't. I think it's it's more important on this particular gun for the close range hosing. Mm-hmm. The speed yeah, that you're able yeah. to in this type of wind, this type of weather condition. Being yeah, all able things to... considered, right? All things considered, environmentally, what's going on here? Again, this is practical accuracy, so it's kind of what we have on the day is how it's. This is what we got. Yeah. So you know, this is how it performs under these circumstances, and I would anticipate that on a perfectly calm, nice, gentle day, that you could smoke this with maybe one or two, maybe three misses on the way out. But I think what's interesting about it is that in this particular instance, with the conditions that we're shooting in, if you weren't running the 4 by in this particular setup, I would anticipate that you would not have been able to correct. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Well, as well. A. Anyways, impressive system nonetheless. Yeah. It's older tech, but it works. Just understand its limitations. Don't hog up onto the site. and. Yeah. The cartridge will carry you out. Yeah. It's also extremely rugged. I mean, these these things, you could beat them around quite a bit more than some of your normal tube optics. Right. Anyway. Cool. Good run. Do you enjoy arguing with other viewers on the internet? on which rifle performed better on practical accuracy. Well, we have a solution for you. Go to our Patreon page and scroll down. You'll find the practical accuracy scoreboard where we have ranked and compiled all the data of all the firearms we have tested on the practical accuracy course. Furthermore, it's already separated into the different categories, so you can go back to your argument as quickly as possible. And whether you decide to support us via Patreon, subscription, or just a normal viewer, we thank you. 916, this is 0 Vic, 8 packs, red con 1, green to green, top copy, over. 0 this is 0 Roger, over. 1 one pack, green to green, over. 0 one Roger, over. 1 2, 1 Victor, 2 packs, red con 1, over.